What's going on, y'all? It's Ken J. Nolan here, and I'm back here to talk about the verses last night. You already know it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? But before I even get into the events that transpired, I want to talk to Timbaland and Swiss Beats, all right? Now, I love the verses format, you know what I'm saying? Big fan of y'all both individually and collectively, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like the direction y'all going in is a little bit too corporatized, man. When I came to the verses through the Triller app, first thing I got introduced to was this $2.99 to even access it. I didn't even know what was going on. And by the time I paid for it to watch it, I was looking at a boxing match that wasn't over. You know what I'm saying? I didn't come there for no boxing. You feel me? Then we get to this DJ competition. Great opportunity for the DJs. You know what I'm saying? Love that for them. They competing to be the resident DJs for Versus, period. Dope. But I ain't come there to see them. You know what I'm saying? I damn sure didn't pay my $2.99 to see them. You know what I mean? Um, then, when we finally get into the intro of the show, some dude named Lil Pooty comes out and plays a, vi- a music video that nobody in the world or the crowd asked for. You know what I'm saying? No offense to Lil Pooty. You know what I'm saying? It's a great opportunity for him as well. And, you know, don't take it the wrong way if you see this video. However, just being real, man. It was a few things in the beginning of the show that nobody asked for, nobody needed, and the show ended up starting late. Now, I'm sure this helped because nobody knows if the artist even got there on time, and I'm sure y'all added that to the show to be a buffer. But just from an audience standpoint, viewer standpoint of somebody that wants to enjoy the show and wants to, you know, see y'all flourish in the best way that y'all can, I don't know, bro. We're going to have to figure something else out. I did see some people that said Bone Thugs versus 3-6 Mafia was a bad matchup. And if you just strictly look at their album catalogs, I can understand why you might say that. But a lot of these versus competitions are really built on the history that the artists have between each other. So if you go back all the way to like 1994, 1996, 3-6 Mafia and Bone Thugs actually had some bad blood between them. It was specifically between Lord Infamous and Bone Thugs because they had that similar uh, double time syncopated flow that actually became the Migos flow later on, but we ain't got to get into all of that. So yeah, for those of y'all that say this was a bad matchup, I get it. But this was built on the actual history. Same way we had Brandy versus Monica, same way we had Gucci versus Jeezy, and the Lil' Kim versus Foxy Brown rumor that's been speculated all this time, you know what I'm saying? It's been back in the rumor mill as of late. Now, what I will say is, Bone came out for the first four or five rounds, and they was playing some pretty weak stuff, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, I knew the records, but at the same time, I kind of didn't. Like, I remembered them, but they weren't really the most memorable songs from their catalog, you know what I'm saying? Whereas the music that 3-6 came out playing, even if it wasn't the most popular, it was still stuff that I remembered very vividly, and it just had really good energy to it to where when they went out and performed it, it got the crowd hype, and it just translated better when you look back at it 20 some years later, you know what I'm saying? Their music has definitely aged a little bit better than Bones did, at least production wise. Now, throughout the first few rounds of the actual battle, Lazy Bone and DJ Paul did have some competitive banter going back and forth. It never seemed like anything that was not friendly, um, but I guess the other guys in the group wasn't really taking too kind to it. I know Lazy was throwing jokes, jokes and jabs, basically saying that um, 3 Six had hella great production but they could not compare to them as rappers which i don't disagree with i don't think anyone in the world would disagree with but at the same time when it comes down to music it's not just about your lyrical ability you know what i mean and i know a lot of artists out there um, are probably still learning that right now eventually we get to uh when bone thugs perform their song buddha lovers um which is a very slow song it's kind of like a ballad they're singing through the whole thing it's not really much actual rapping and DJ Paul and Gangsta Boo were actually slow dancing and twirling while they were singing this record. And you could even hear somebody in the background like uh, singing along to it. I'm guessing it was Juicy J. So there's a part there's a part in the song where they go, a sack, a sack, a sack, a sack. And you can hear him going, a lack, a lack, a lack. So by the time they got to the end of the song, uh, Busy Bone had to make it known that he was not going any, more, any further in the show until he addressed them particularly. All right, so he said, you ugly motherfuckers ain't finna be up here uh, mocking me while I'm up here on this stage. You know, Juicy J didn't respond too kindly to that. So he said, hey man, suck my, 
basically invited him to the Frank stand. And for y'all, y'all have been uh, paying attention to the whole versus lineage and everything. You are, you would know that the New York artist Dipset and, and the Locks had a similar situation with the banter, but they made it very clear ahead of time nobody should be inviting each other to the Frank stand. So Juicy J didn't get that memo, and he got the mic and a water bottle thrown at him. You know what I'm saying? Now, to retaliate, Juicy J did throw like a half of a punch, you know what I'm saying, just to let y'all know I'm still from Memphis and I can't go back to the crib if I don't swing at this dude for throwing a mic at me. But it wasn't much of a fight other than that. Busy Bone, some kind of way, ended up on the opposite side of the stage behind all of the rest of the Bone members. I don't know how that happened so quickly, but... Uh, I tell you what, Gangsta Boo was not feeling that. She was like, hey, man, this man ain't even took his, what, he ain't take his medicine today? Like, we done did shows with these people, man. What, what, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Even DJ Paul chimed in and said that uh, this is exactly why he hadn't been included in the group in recent years. So, uh, Busy has always been a bit of a wild card. He's had a really tough life. He's always battled with, uh, you know, mental health issues. So, hopefully, um, you know, he finds peace. That's really all I can really say about that. He came back out and apologized, made, tried to make things right. He apologized to both 36 Mafia and the crowd in the audience. He said that he never intended to ruin the show. Uh, him and Juicy J actually exchanged a very firm handshake where they pieced it up and everything. So it was good to see that even though things did go left, they were able to get their uh, differences put aside in a pretty quick manner to where the rest of the show wasn't jeopardized. The rest of the show was actually way more live after the fight. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. So like, there was a lot of guest performances that came out, which is probably why they could not end the show because they had all of these guests lined up and surprises that ended up pretty much taking over the negative light that had already been done on the situation. So we got to see Lil Wayne when he came out for Bands of Maker Dance. We got to see Lil Flip when they did uh, Riding Spinners. We got to see Young Buck, you know what I'm saying, when they did uh, Stay Fly. We also got to see Chameleon there with Bone Thugs when they did Riding Dirty. And we even got a guest Pokemon appearance from Terrence Howard. He came out as his character from Hustle and Flow DJ and performed it's hard out here for a pimp. Now, not my favorite song, but they did win an Oscar off that thing, so you can't really hate on them too bad, you know what I'm saying? Now, I will say, this was a pretty crazy situation. Um, once again, people did feel like this was a mismatch, and <laughs> clearly, the fight was fixed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, make sure y'all drop y'all comments down below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. To the channel we're trying to get to that thousand you understand what i'm saying we at about 8 30 now but still got a little ways to go so make sure you subscribe to the channel share the channel i'm giving y'all valid information outside of uh, these recap videos too so if you're an artist this is something you definitely want to tap in with all right much love and respect y'all peace